welcome to a new episode of BrainNet's Executive Talks. Today, we will talk about the branded goods packaging sector. Sitting next to me, I have Paul Chosbury, CPO of Chesapeake. Chesapeake is a global producer of branded goods specialty packaging operating across 40 facilities worldwide, supplying goods to the pharmaceutical, confectionery, drinks, and other branded goods sectors. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Martin. Before we are going to learn from Paul about some specific supply chain aspects at Chesapeake, let's have a brief look at this company. Paul, can you fill us in as to what makes supply chain particularly challenging in your industry? Yes, Martin. I think if you break it down into four key areas, we've, we start with our, our customers, obviously. We have quite a, a diverse customer group um, operating in different, uh, different regions, different uh, business areas, uh, all of which have quite different, different requirements. Um, to put some metrics around that, we have probably uh, 4,000 different delivery points and therefore probably 4,000 slightly different customer requirements. Uh, secondly, th there is the products that we, we supply. We, we supply about 1.8 billion products a year into the marketplace, uh, wh which is a quite a phenomenal number. Um, in essence, what, what we do as, as Chesapeake is, is we are uh, working with our customers to support their brand management and also more importantly we, we try to help them to differentiate their products on the shelf in what is a, a very difficult and competitive retail market. So th thirdly there's, there's our suppliers and supply base. We, we have many thousands of suppliers globally. Often those suppliers are, are actually bigger than us so it, it really creates a challenging environment for us to, to negotiate in those terms. Um, again to put some metrics around that we've got potentially um, more than 2,000 combinations of board that we use on our, on our products, often customer specified, and we have upwards of 9,000 potential combinations of inks and varnishes. Obviously, we print onto that board to, to create that branding effect for the customers. So again, quite challenging. And finally, there's the, the issue of data. Now, we have more than 40 sites globally, of which there are slight differences and slight independencies for those businesses, and pulling that data together in a coherent manner is, is always quite a challenge. This sounds like a really complex environment, Paul. What have you at Chesapeake done over the last years to address those challenges? Well, over the last couple of years, we've totally re-engineered our, our purchasing and supply chain functions. And we've moved ourselves away from being quite a traditional base to something akin to strategic sourcing, so something that is much more business critical and, uh, and has the full backing of our senior management. Um, that manifests itself in terms of putting in place a, uh, a global category management process overlaid by a regional dimension that, that allows us to give really good focus onto the business units and to the regions. And it also means building the infrastructure of, uh, around our data systems. It also means challenging the assumptions that we've made in the past about who our supplier should be and, and what regions that we should, should source from. So again, that, that has resulted in us developing suppliers in South America and looking to further develop suppliers in China and, and Asia. Again, quite, quite a significant change for our, for our business. Additionally, we've had a real focus on our people. So we've put all of our people through a, uh, a development center process to, to really um, identify the gaps in skills and competencies and at an individual basis, put them through a development program to get them to where we need them to be, to be effective in, in uh, category management. Uh, Paul, if, if I might just pick up your letter point, uh, what specific benefits 
have you achieved by better integrating procurement into your sales and operations environment? Well, let, let's be honest with each other. Without significant benefits to the organization, they wouldn't need me and my organizations. So we, we have spent a lot of time and effort to make sure that we have the right system in place to, to quantify those benefits. The whole program, though, is structured around quality, cost, delivery, cash, and innovation. And you know our metrics reflect that. We have already seen quite some significant financial benefits delivered to the organisation, and we have a nice pipeline of, of projects coming through that's going to deliver that in, you know, in subsequent years of the, of the programme. In addition, our, our focus on um, more integration of our demand signal with our customers had, has allowed us to really focus on, on cash and working capital. As a result of our focus on category management, we are also developing supply chains that are much more agile and able to respond much quicker to our, our demand signals and our customer requirements. So all in all, the benefits have, have been quite... This sounds like a lot of change was required at Chesapeake to make this happen. Paul, you're also undertaking doctoral research at Aston University on the topic of procurement change effectiveness. According to this, what are the key determinants for successful change as also experienced at Chesapeake? The, the research is, is building upon work that, that was done in automotive, aerospace and, and also the public sector, so quite a wide-ranging uh, set of environments. And, and what has emerged from that research is a, is a five-point model. The first is uh, a compelling case to make the change. The second is the competencies of both the organisation and the people involved. Thirdly, it's, it's having the right strategy, the right approach to, to the marketplace, to, to your suppliers. Uh, fourth is related to the effective communication of the programme and the marketing of that programme, both internally and, and externally. And finally, it's, it's, um, it's having good governance. So it's making sure that there's a direct link between the programme and what the CFO sees on its bottom line. Paul, thank you very much for sharing your experience and, and your insight into those aspects with us today. My pleasure.